Okay, well, uh, today we are going to talk regarding the um, rest of the fundamental um, concept in digital image processing. But uh, before that, I share you some webinar. This is the recent webinar in, from the IEEE. It's very valuable. Uh, I personally attend that. It's about microcontroller. Um, maybe next semester or next to that, you had the subject of embedded system. This talk is nice for you whenever you have time. You can uh, watch that. Generally, it will come from expert people. And as I promise you, I will share you one more uh, webinar, which is uh, it's in USA. It's from NDVA um, um, CPU or NDPA GPU uh, company, and it's free for the student. I will share the link for you. You can also attend that conference. Uh, in a week, um, if I can find uh, some uh, webinar which is related to your uh, subject, maybe subject that currently you have, or maybe the subject that you have in future, I will try to share. But um, it's good that if you can give the feedback from that to me. And um, because I think you should not waste your time just to watching that. If there will be some feedback from that, maybe in personal also, we will give extra mark to the student to give the feedback. Mm -hmm. Having some summaries, having some uh, critical point about that will help us. Okay. Let us continue the today lecture uh, for the uh, about this digital image uh, fundamental and uh, having the lecture. Okay. Uh, then this is the lecture lecture six. Uh, first things that or first part that I prepare for you. Uh, the difference between the concept of PPI and DPI, the relationship between the pixels, and hopefully we can finish the image transfer form, uh, part. We talked regarding this P PPI and DPI, but a uh, little bit I make some more PPT from some recent source for you that has become critical because um, mainly we need this uh, subject uh, when we work with the pictures. PPI and DPI are two important terms that anyone who works with the image uh, should know it. Both this uh, define uh, regarding two words of resolution and clarity of an image, but each uh, refer to some separate media. Uh, Somehow people can know it as the uh, word which interfere or which related to the digital uh, versus some print word. Uh, PPI and DPI are often used interchangeably when they shouldn't be. It means that most of the time people use these two words in the um, wrong uh, place or in the wrong uh, application when they want to use. And uh, suppose as an application, understanding that how they are different and how to apply in um, each in your project will empower, empower you to produce a quality print and to optimize the digital image for the web or any uh, work that you have. Here I show the pixel and dots uh, as the input and output, as you will see, in the figure, have this in your mind. Um, we will talk uh, regarding this concept more. PPI, uh, which is stand for the abbreviation of the pixel per inch, refer uh, both to the fixed number of pixel that uh, a screen can display and density of pixel uh, within a digital image. 
pixel count, on, on the other hand, refer to the number of the pixel uh, across the length and width of a digital image. And uh, that is the image dimension in each pixel. Pixel, or uh, if you want to uh, make it a simpler word, we can say the pictures elements are um, defined as some smallest building blocks or of a digital image. Zoom in any image on your, uh, and you will uh, see it break out into the colored scholar, which these we call it pixels. Maybe this definition will refer last lecture, no need to say it again. But DPI, as I showed two sample of DPI in this figure, uh, we can call it stand as the dot per inch and refer to the relations value of physical printer. Uh, and uh, as you know, by this printer reproduce an image by spitting out uh, tiny dots. And the number of dots per inch ref, uh, affect the amount of the detail and overall quality of the uh, print. As it shows uh, in the figure you saw, the 72 DPI and one uh, 44 uh, DPI figure, which uh, I shown here for you, has the sample of these two concepts. But now we reach to the point to know what the difference between PPI and uh, DPI. As I said, that PPI as the pixel per inch, that is how many points of light live in uh, on an inch of a screen, means that if you measure the uh, paper that you have or the place that it's uh, stand in your uh, paper or, as, or output, in, in any output from you, we can say that uh, how many points of lights live on image screen. And this is the number of the pixel per inch in your image. Uh, this will affect the print size of your uh, photo and will affect the quantity of the output that you have. While um, PPR can help uh, you as the user to determine the quality of an image, and it's uh, really as little else to do with actual printing. On the other side, we have the word which we call it DPI, as a stand, as the dots per inch, and that's how many droplets of liquid square into an inch of your printed paper. Uh, we can say that DPI is measure how many tiny and tiny droplets of ink a printer is lying down in its teacher, a pattern to form a one inch of print. Uh, DPI only refers to the printer. Every pixel output uh, is made up of different colored ink. Uh, usually we have four to six color, and also it's many printer use even more than this. And because of this small number of colors, the printers need to be able to mix these inks to make up all the colors of image. So we can say each pixel of image is created by series of teeny dots, and you could think them as the sub pixel, something like that. Uh, if we want to have uh, this difference in just two, three simple words, we can say that PPI just um, refer or uh, interfere when we work for image, and DPI it's uh, the word which use when we work with device like printer and that. Okay, then that is why uh, when you want to download or upload the image in, or any documents for some web page or creating the web page and that, they said that this much DPI we need, okay? Because later maybe from your document, they want to take their print out. And, um, but when we design the image, we stand for the PPI of the image.
Okay, well, <clears throat> let us see them in one figure. As you see that printer dot mix uh, some CMYK inks, as you know, and then we'll create the dots, which is the combination of these words. And DPI describes the amount of detail in an image based on the concentration of paper dots. And that is why we call it DPI. Maybe uh, this uh, figure which I bring for you as the part of the chocolate, it's a good uh, example for the DPI. The difference between PPI and DPI is that DPI described the resolution, PPI is described the resolution in pixel of digital image, where DPI describes the amount of the inks, dots on printed image. This word in your mind, it's maybe the main target that we can talk regarding them. And through the PPI largely referred to the screen, uh, display. It's also affect the print size of your design and thus the quality of the output that you have. DPI on the other side or on the other hand has nothing to do with any digital and primary uh, concerns the print. Then pixel count in the inch, uh, which we call it PPI. It's uh, something that I show here. And as you see, see that the person has some magnifier that uh, based on this zooming job, you can see the PPI of your image. Uh, we in pixel or sub-pixel, which they are in the color of red, green, and blue, and some light elements, and the human eyes cannot see because the additive color processing blends them into the single uh, which appears on the pixel level. Uh, this is why the PPI will utilize and use the RGB color as the red, green, and blue. And also we know them as additive color model. Um, really these dots are not exist in print and only the electronic display of image like television, a screen, computer, and that we can have them. even you can see the difference between 300 PPI and 72 PPI of image, which I show you here as a sample. And you will see the difference between them in the figure. Then if we want to know where we can use the PPI, we can use them whenever we work with the digital image. And PPI is most useful in preparing the files for printing through the DPI we will be used by the physical printer. An image with a higher PPI tends to be higher quality because it has the greater pixel density, but the exporting at 300 PPI is generally considered uh, as the a standard value uh, for documents, and that, that is why, you know, in most of the application, and you fill out in the electronic manner. They said that your photo should have this standard, 300 PPI. Uh, here at the below, I show you two detail, and after that, I zoom it. You will see the lower PPI and higher PPI of suppose one figure, which a lower PPI resolution result is less details and pixelated image. And on the other side, the higher PPI resolution result in more details and a sharper, sharper image. See, with the higher PPI, you can see more detail. Okay. That was uh, something that I think uh, yeah, it's related to our topic and it's a good start even for today to work with the pixel and um, what should be the standard for the pixel. I mean, the minimum things that have the inf informative image is something like 300 PPI. Keep it in your mind. Then we can continue for today with the uh, uh, 
uh, this topic that what is the relation now between the pixel? Okay. Okay. With the pixel. Now let us see this 300 PPI in the form of the mathematical form. And consider that suppose you have the pixel coordination at X and Y. As you remember, we said that mainly we will talk the image in our subject in the 2D form of X and Y. And if we know the P at the coordination of X and Y, then it has four horizontal and vertical neighbors. Means that any dot, if you assume it in the coordination of X and Y, it can have four neighbors. Maybe it's more, but we take four one. One which has the same X, but it has the plus and minus in the Y direction, then minus one and plus one. And another one which has the same Y value, but has the plus one and minus one of the X direction. This set of pixel, we call it four neighbors or P, which is uh, people will show it N4 means that number four or neighbor four and P. P is stand for the pixel. And each pixel is one unit distance from X and Y, as you will see the distance is longer. And some of the neighbors of P align outside of the digital image if X and Y is not border of image. Then what we learn, we learn that we know the pixel as the dimension of X and Y, then these X and Y in the form of four neighbors can have uh, minus plus in Y direction or minus plus in X direction. See this form. Uh, can we have more uh, neighbors? Yes, we can have eight neighbors as I show you. Then if you want to show these eight, number, eight neighbors, we can uh, show with the NHP and uh, then with that, uh, uh, we can show the neighbors and form of the neighbors of pixel. Uh, let us see the four uh, diagonal neighbor of P has the coordination. Even we can have this form of uh, neighbors which they have the difference between y plus and minus of y and plus and minus of uh, x like this, as I show in the first one, which we call these as the nd of the p, okay? nd is something like that, x uh, minus one in one side and plus minus and x plus in another side and y plus minus. This form, we call it neighbor of ND, okay? As we say, then full form of the neighbors that you can imagine is something like N8 or eight neighbors, which uh, as before, some of the point in ND and N8 Full, uh, fall outside of the image and it's on the border of the image that you will see. It means that maybe we can imagine this N8 as the combination of N4 and ND. And uh, this is the neighbors of it. Then till now we learned that for a pixel, we have three form of showing N4, ND and N8. Once more, I show them here. ND is figurative uh, form is something like this. N4, as I shown here, and N8 is uh, the last photo which we show. Uh, this concept of uh, PPI and neighbors of uh, pixel, I can say it's the foundation to working with the image because then so many things will come uh, to picture after knowing these neighbors. One word is 
uh, adjacency, uh, which its two pixels are linked if they are neighbors and the gray level satisfy few detail pattern of similarity. Uh, this is the meaning of adjacency. And then, uh, for instance, in a binary image, uh, we have two pixels which are connected. If they are four neighbors and have the same value of zero, one, uh, we can say that we have this uh, definition. Another thing that we should uh, know with the help of concept of neighbor, it's path which is uh, a path from the pixel P with coordination of X and Y to another pixel, means pixel number Q or pixel name Q with the coordination of S and T. We can know it is the sequence of distinct pixel with the coordination. You know that we have X0, Y0, X1, Y1, X2, Y2 till X1, Y1, which if X0 and uh, Y0 is equal to X and Y, and X1 and Y1 is equal to S and T, then we can say that XI and YI is adjacent to XI minus one and YI minus one for I between one and N, where N is the length of the paths that uh, we can have it. More we will talk like that. Then. One more concept we should consider is adjacency and connectivity, which uh, in that, if you imagine V as the set of the intensity value which used to define the adjacency and connectivity, in the binary image, we have the V equal to one, and if uh, we are referring to adjacency of pixel with value of one, in the gray, uh, scale image, the idea is the same, but uh, V typically contains more elements, something like 180, 181, 182, 200. As you know, we have the value between zero to 55. Then we can say that V is the set which can be subset this 256 value for any point. Uh, for the adjacency, we have uh, some type. Uh, mainly they are in the three parts, and it's uh, divided into three parts. Part one is that when we have four adjacency, which in that two pixels of P and Q with the value from V are four adjacent if Q is uh, in the set of and 4P means that it has the four uh, neighbors. See the below picture has the four adjacent, adjacent uh, pixel. And you will see that suppose if one in the middle is the pixel that we want and it has the four value of the neighbors, then uh, we can say that this is the four adjacency. And then what we know for the the second part as the eighth adjacency is that two pixel of P and Q with the value from V are eight adjacents if Q is in the set of N8, means that it has the eight neighbor. And the last part is the M adjacency or mix, which is in that two pixel P and Q with the value from V are uh, M adjacents if Q is in the form of four neighbors, or Q is in the form of D. And uh, we know that uh, we have the common part or mixed border with the N4 of P and N form of Q. Have this concept in your uh, mind. Again, we will talk uh, more about it. Uh, Important note is that the type of the adjacency used uh, must be specified by the user, and uh, then we can work with the pixel and this cup set. 
Know that the mixed adjacency is a modification of the eighth adjacency, and it's introduced to eliminate the, some uh, ambiguities that uh, often arise when eighth adjacency is used. For example, if you see the arrangement of the pixel, which I shown in figure number 226 from your book, and then it's the arrangement that we have. Pixels that are in the eight uh, adjacents, we showing with the dash line here for the to the center pixel, and with the M adjacency, we show it here. Okay. Then uh, in this example, we can note that to connect between the two pixels, because we are searching to having the path between them in eight adjacency way. You can find the multiple paths between two pixels, while in M adjacency, you can find only one path, uh, one path between two pixels. So the M adjacency uh, will eliminate the multiple paths for the connection that has been generated by eight adjacents. And two subsets of S1 and S2 are adjacent. If some pixel in S1 <clears throat> is adjacent to some pixel in S2, and uh, we have the adjacency either four, eight, and M uh, adjacency of the pixels. Uh, then, with this concept, if we want to know the digital paths connectivity in a figure, we can say that digital paths from pixel P which will be assumed with the coordination of X and Y to pixel Q with the coordination of S and T uh, can be uh, the relation that we have between uh, the X, I, Y, I and X, I uh, minus one and Y, I minus one and our adjacents to I between one and N. And if we assume as the x0 and y0 to x1, y0, the paths can be something close. And if we can specify four, eight, or m paths, depending on the type of the adjacency, two pixels uh, so of P and Q are said to be connected. In S, if there exists the path between them consisting the entirely of the pixels in S. For any pixel P in S, the set of the pixels that are connected to it uh, in S is called connected components. And if S, uh, one connected component, it's called the connected set. Uh, ridges and boundaries are other things that we should know it. And uh, we know as R as the subset of pixel in the image, which R is the region of image. And if R is connected to set, the boundary of uh, a region R is the set of the pixel in the region that have one or no neighbors that are not in R. Uh, one more example for the digital paths I showed here which is returned to the previous example. You will see here the arrangement of the pixel and eight adjacent, which they shown here. As you see in the PK figure P, B, the paths between the top right and bottom right pixel are eight paths. And the paths between the same two pixel in figure C is M paths. Connectivity, if you want to have definition regarding that, we can say that if S is represent the subset of pixel in an image, two pixel of P and Q are set to be connected in S. And if there exists a path between them consisting entirely of pixel in S, for any pixel P in S, the set of pixel that are connected to in uh, S, we call it connected components of S. And if it only has one connected component, then the set S we can collect the set. 
Um, better maybe or brief definition regarding the region and boundary is there that let R will be the subset of pixel. Then we can call R a region of image if it's a connected set. And we know the boundary, we or also call border or contour of region of R is the set of the pixel in the region that have one or more neighbors that are not in R. If R happens to be the entire region, then the, its boundary is defined and the set of the pixel in the first and last rows and column of an image. And this extra uh, definition is required because, the, because an image has no neighbors beyond its border. Normally, when we refer to image, we are referring to the subsets of uh, uh, some image that uh, we have. And then any pixel in the boundary of the region that happens to the conic uh, side with the border of the image are included implicitly as the part of the region boundary. Um, maybe uh, it's better that I tell you that all this relation and this definition that I tell you, these are the basic words that we should know them. And because we are going to present them in the form of the mat, then this uh, introductory part will, uh, uh, we should follow and see. Uh, there is one another word which we call it the image geometric correction or frequently referred as the image wrapping, which is the procedure of digitally manipulating image data uh, in the way that the image projector uh, projection currently match the specific projection surface or shape. Image uh, geometric correction balances the deformation from by off-axis projector or a screen manager or a symmetrical screen service by applying the pre-compensating inverse distortion to that image in digital domain. Uh, then with these words that we learn, now we are going to measure the distance of two pixels. Suppose for pixel P, Q, and Z, which they have the different coordination of X, Y, S, T, and V, and W, respectively, D can be the distance of them. Uh, if uh, we assume as the D of P and Q, means that the distance between pixel P and Q, which is greater than D, then, uh, D of or distance between this P and Q is zero if P is equal to Q. Q means that two pixels have the same location. In the other word, X, Y is equal to S and T. And we can say also distance between P and Q are equal to distance of Q and P. And distance between uh, P and Z, when uh, the distance between P and Q is uh, less than distance of P and Q plus uh, distance of Q and Z, which is something like triangular form of the dots. This is the, the last statement shows like that. Let us see it better. Then with this concept, we can calculate the distance uh, between the points or between the pixel of P and Q. First measurement is the eucylidium uh, distance, which is between P and Q. And we know that X minus S uh, square two, uh, power by two plus Y minus T power by two, then the square root of that, 
will shows the distance between these two, two pixels and pixel having the distance less than or equal to some value of r from x and r, r points uh, contents in the disk of radius r at r at the x and y then first is that the distance between point p and q The D4 distance, uh, also people call it city block distance, okay? It's between P and Q, which is defined as the ABS of X minus S plus Y minus T, okay? They call it D4. Each distance uh, measurement, now they have some meaning or some specific name. And as you will see, the pixels having a D4 distance from X and Y less than or equal to some value of R from the diamond centers at X and Y. Uh, if we are going to have some example, the pixel with the distance of D4, which is less than two from X and Y from the following con concept of uh, distance we can have. The pixel with D4, are one are four neighbors of x and y see pixel zero you see here the value of zero it has four neighbors that all the fours are one then another thing is that with the concept of d8 or uh, neighboring with the eight point we call this at uh, the chessboard distance, and it's the, which we have between the two pixels of P and Q, and we can formulate it by maximum of uh, X minus S and my Y minus T of uh, uh, distance of absolute. And you know that this pixel having a D8 distance from X, Y, less than or equal to some value uh, r from the square uh, centers at x and y <clears throat> let us see this example again see the pixel zero it has a d8 which the distance is less than two and uh, from x and y from the following contours of constant distance Uh, then, um, with the concepts of the neighbors, we had one M adjacency that in that DM distance will come to picture, which is defined as the shortest impact between the points. In this case, the distance between two pixels will depend on the value of pixels along the path, as well as the value of their neighbors. Um, in one figure, if I want to show the distance measurement, this is the nice photo that I found. And you will see that the Euclidean distance is something like this. City block distance between two pixels will come like the second pictures. And the last picture is chessboard distance, which you can see them. Okay, where we use these pixels uh, distance measurement, we will see. But now first we should know the formulate of them and how it will calculate. See some examples. Suppose if we want to compute the distance between two pixels of E and Q with the mentioned dimension of one and one and two and two. Uh, we should know that the Euclidean distance is something like <clears throat> here as I show, then city block distance is uh, something like one minus two plus one minus one. ABS and D8 or chessboard distance, it's something like this. Uh, one more example. Suppose uh, we use the city block distance to show the four neighbors. You saw that the pixel A, pixel B, pixel C, and pixel D, you know that all, you can calculate that all are equal to one. Now, as the Homework, you can try to chessboard distance and prove the eight neighbors. 
to this uh, distance measurement. In your own, you can do it. It's not my task for today, but you can calculate yourself. And um, some more example for distance measurement we will see. Suppose if you consider the following arrangement that I shows between pixel one, two, three, four, and P, and uh, you will see that P and P2 and P4 has the value of one, and P1 and P3 can have the value of zero or one, and the adjacency of the pixel value is the V is equal to one. Now, to compute the DM between the point P and P4, we can have some cases. Case number one is that if P1 is equal to zero and P3 is equal to zero, then the length of shortest empaths come to picture something like that, uh, which is equal to two based on the formula that we give. And if P1 is one and P3 is zero, now P1 and P will no longer be adjacent. Uh, then the length of the shortest will be three between them. If we assume P1 as zero and P3 as one, then the same applies here and the shortest emphasis will be again three. And in case four, if we assume P1 as one and P3 as one, then the length of shortest empaths will be four. All R uh, was related to how we should calculate the pixels as uh, well as the neighbors. And uh, then uh, till here, we learn about PTI, we learned about pixel, we learned about distance between them and adjacency uh, definition, border and distance uh, between the pixel. Um, we need this definition. I request you that you please read this PPT once again and calculate them. Even uh, I will send the short note of today uh, lecture again on the web page of MOC. You can down, you can see it. I don't know, read it, and uh, then the points become more clear for you. Uh, come to our concept regarding the digital image processing. Um, now we have some formula that um, we will describe the formula, but really I don't want myself view to mark this formula, but you should know them. What we want to do with this formula, main job will carry out with the help of MATLAB. But if we know this formula, it will help us to analyze them better. Let us start for image transfer. Um, and uh, generally, we will start with the 2D transfer of image. Generally, a 2D forward transfer uh, can be expressed by the summation with two parts, which of uh, function f and g, which uh, g as the M N U V, we call it forward transformation kernel, and a 2V, uh, 2D inverse transfer, uh, which is expressed as the F of M and N. Uh, in this uh, second equation, as you will see, we have the parameter of or function of H M N U, which we call it inverse transform kernel. Okay, then we have two things. One is that forward transform kernel, which we know it as G, and we have inverse transform kernel, which we call it as H, okay? The difference uh, of this 2D transform is using by forward or inverse transform kernel, as it's shown in the figure. But if we want to separable the transform, a 2D transform is said to be the separable if uh, its forward and inverse uh, or reverse kernel are expressed as the product of two 1D kernel. Uh, 
and each operating independently on each dimension, you will see that we have G1 and G2, which are from M and U and N and V for the forward and inverse uh, or reverse uh, kernel. And the principal advantage of this separability is that uh, the forward or inverse to this transform can be obtained in two steps by successive application of one D transform independently along each dimension. Uh, then uh, the, another form of this transform is 2D discrete. Fourier transformer, which people we call it DFT. In the 2D uh, the secret Fourier transform or DFT, we have the function of F of U and V as an image. F, M, and N as the size of some matrix, which we'll define. And the next part is the uh, Inverse the secret Fourier transformer or uh, or forward Fourier transformer far. Uh, as you will see, the equation that I show here has the second uh, form of the image transform. With the 2D the uh, secret Fourier transformer kernel, we will see that in the forward forward one, we have the equation of the one and e uh, rises by minus j two pi and the rest of the formula. And in the inverse kernel, you will see that uh, we have uh, the uh, below formula, which we shown with the g, with the h as the symbol of inverse kernel. And this is uh, for the case where N and M are equal to each other. Another form that we have, these are the fast Fourier transfer or FFT, which due to the probability of separability of 2D DFT, the FFT or fast Fourier transform algorithm developed for 1D DFT and is applied without any modification of 2D, DFT, 2Y successively along each dimension. As uh, I show here for you the formula, again, you have the F, U, and V, and some part which is related to the matrix, and some function which will be additive to that. If we want to see the fast Fourier transformer or FFT, we can see like this, it's better. First, we have the F of M and N, and row transform, uh, which will be multiplication by N. And then we have one uh, result as F of M and V. And then we have column transform, which we have uh, finally F, U, and V on the uh, image. Uh, the other separable 2D transform are 2D desecret cosine transform, which you will see here. Again, we have the term of sine or cosine here as the forward one or as the inverse one here. And uh, you will see the difference between them is that F of F, M and N and F of U and V, which will be the main difference between these two formula, which shows that we are going to the forward or we will come back to the inverse disagreed uh, transform. Uh, we have one more method that we call it uh, Carhernan lower or hoteling transform, which will be the, or people will call it PCA or principal component analysis, which in that, if we have the set of X, uh, which will be population of random vectors of uh, Xi of one to N, then we have the M, which will be mean vector of X and define as M is equal to X. And let's see, can we 
covariance matrix of uh, X, which will be showed like this. Then A will be the matrix whose first row is the a, uh, agent uh, vector corresponding to the largest agent value of C. And the last row is that the corresponding to the smallest equivalence of C. Uh, this PCA uh, can be shown like this, means that this uh, slide is maybe more clear, that you will see that we have the matrix, which is between the transform, uh, transpose form. And uh, then with that, we have the mean factor, which shows by mx. And then uh, the six as the smallest again uh, value it shows here. Uh, with this PCA method, then the current lawyer or care or hoteling transform of X is the matrix which is given by the Y is equal to A of X minus MX, which is the mean of Y is zero. And covariance of CY can be represented by a below matrix where uh, lambda i is equal to one to n, uh, which is the Asian value of six. In this method, uh, the components of a uh, y vector, as uh, you can see, uh, the components of this uh, y are uncorrelated. And uh, lambda i to n are uh, agent value of cy as well. Hence, the agent vectors of cy are also same as those are cy. We can say that KL or hoteling transform is usual, useful for so separating the principal components from a set of independent uh, observation image. Um, here you will see that there is one more method that we call it singular value or decomposition, which we call it SVD, which in that any rectangular matrix A of size of M by N can be expressed as the A is equal to USV with the transpose, which is used U is the orthogonal square matrix of size m by n. And the column of u are agent vectors are a by a transforms. V is the orthogonal square matrix of size n by n. Again, we have the column of v are agent vectors of a transpose by a. And s is the diagonal matrix of size m by n with the uh, diagonal elements, which are equal to the square size of them. These uh, image transform are related to the energy conservation and rotation of the partial theorem. And the unity transform preserve the signal energy or equivalent uh, the, the length of the signal. This means that Unity transfer simply rotates the signal vectors into the n dimensional space. Then uh, most unity transform has the tendency to pick the large fraction of the signal energy into the relatively few components of transform coefficient. The following transfers are having the composition in the order of DCT and KLRR. Some important uh, transform will be studied. Some of the important feature of image transform is first is the decoloration when the input signal is highly correlated and the transform coefficient uh, tends to be uncorrelated. Uh, this part means that the off diagnostical elements of uh, covariance matrix of the signal are smaller than the diagnostical uh, elements. The second image transform part that I teach you, maybe it's not clear now, but 
the relation and working with them will be monitored on the next following lecture. But first of all, I want that you know them, the image transform uh, formula. And even in the short note, I will put for you to uh, see them. I think for today, it's okay.